So what I've got here then is a uh, original Y Spy Spectrum Analyzer stick. Now I remember looking at these back in, I think it was uh, 2007 that this came out, or it might be 2008. And uh, I was interested in these, but they did have a pretty high price tag. So you know, I had to weigh up whether I'd get any use out of something like this. But um, I've had this sent in to me by uh, a subscriber. He doesn't want me to actually name him. And he actually installs uh, wireless networks professionally. And uh, this is his own. He's now superseded this with the uh, newer versions of uh, this particular product. It's by uh, MetaGeek. And, um, you know, with something like this, you are actually really paying for the uh, software. The software development has uh, improved over the years. And, uh, you know, there's not a great deal to the hardware. I can't see the hardware costing, you know, a great deal of money. But I think the newer version of this does cost somewhere in the region of about uh, 500 600 pounds so it is pricey but again you're probably paying for the uh, software like i say so this is quite a useful tool to uh, have if you uh, can get hold of one cheaply and uh, you know it shows up all the noise and activity on the uh, 2.4 gigahertz spectrum and uh, you can uh, see where all the noise is coming from channel by channel and the different frequencies and you can actually work out by the uh, pattern whether it's a uh, wireless network or whether it's a uh, 2.4 gigahertz camera for instance so it's really uh, useful if you're uh, into your fpv and you want to see how your uh, transmitter is actually transmitting in real time and uh, you know if you want to uh, scan for wi-fi and set your router up to its uh, optimum settings and performance you can do a uh, site survey and you can see what's uh, actually being broadcast around you so it is quite useful so if you're lucky you can pick one of these original ones up pretty cheap on ebay i've done a uh, search on past listings and uh, there's a few that have gone for about uh, you know 10 15 pounds some that have gone uh, for slightly more into the uh, 60 pounds mark but uh, if you can get hold of one of these off uh, ebay uh, pretty cheap it is uh, a worthwhile purchase but uh, the software the only software that you can use with this original one is the uh, light free version that you actually download off uh, metageets website and uh, something else to note as well if you see one of the newer versions being sold on ebay um, you might be tempted to put in a bid because you can get it slightly cheaper than from the metageek uh, website uh, be really careful because uh, it's all about the license key for the software that you can use so make sure the seller is actually providing the uh, license key as well otherwise uh, you know you're not going to get value for money because you have to use the uh, light version of the software so as i say this was sent in and uh, he did say that when he purchased this uh, probably about six months later they brought out a uh, another version exactly the same dongle but uh, they had a uh, sma connector on the back so you can connect a uh, antenna to it so it makes it a little bit more of a versatile tool because you can actually uh, connect a directional antenna up and then you can kind of home in on signals to try and figure out where where they're actually coming from and uh, he did uh, see a couple of videos on youtube back uh, in that time but when he actually popped this off and saw how small it was he didn't attempt it himself so i thought it'd be good if we uh, actually crack this open and see uh, what we've actually got to do to modify this and see if we can stick an sma connector on the back because then you know even with the uh, cut down version of the software it'll be uh, a really uh, worthwhile tool to actually have and i'm pretty sure that uh, i can use this in uh, videos in the future if we can modify it so we can put a uh, directional antenna on there so this is uh, definitely going to be a uh, macro lens video again to actually get in there it will be small and uh, it would be nice to actually keep the original case as well with the uh, sma mod on the back but uh, this is a pretty generic case so you know any kind of uh, usb stick case uh, should fit this no problem but uh, i'll try and keep the original case so here's a close-up look with the macro lens then and uh, this is the chip that will most 
concerned about when it comes to modifying this and it's a uh, Cypress chip it's the CYW USB 6934 and I'll leave a link to the data sheet in the description now this chip was a uh, common chip around 2007-2008 uh, and uh, as soon as I actually opened it up and saw this chip I went ahead and uh, got hold of the data sheet because uh, I did remember that with this particular chip it's got uh, two pins one pin for TX and one pin for RX so you have got two tracks coming out of this uh, chip to the uh, antenna so that's something we have to bear in mind when actually uh, modifying the antenna on this so on this side then on pin 3 we've got this trace here and a couple of capacitors leading into the antenna itself and that's the RF in signal path that comes in to pin 3 on this side of the chip you're probably not picking up my uh, pointer very well because I've got it on manual focus focusing on the chip but it's on this side and it's pin 3 now on this side on pin 5 you can see that track coming out of there through again a couple of capacitors and then uh, leading up to the uh, antenna here and that's the RF out pin so you've got the uh, two pins combining into one antenna now the fact that we've got two signals combining into one for the TX and RX on this particular design it's going to make uh, modifying this antenna a little bit easier so uh, I'm going to leave all those capacitors in place I'm not going to touch those what I'm going to do I'm going to sever the antenna here and I'm going to turn this uh, track here the uh, feeding for the antenna into a uh, solder point for our uh, signal pin on our SMA connector and then I'm going to take a look at the underside and try and turn the underside part around this area here into a ground plane so on the back here we've got this big label here so I'm going to be removing that and uh, there's no copper on this part of the uh, PCB on the back it's just uh, completely bare PCB because the, the antenna is all on the other side and uh, we've got no ground plane in this area because that if you put ground plane there it would interfere with that antenna it would stop it from being omnidirectional so what I'm going to have to do is use some of the uh, copper tape like we did in the uh, previous video of the OBD antenna modification extend that ground plane out and then I can solder my uh, PCB SMA connector directly on the back and the hardware on this little stick is quite basic as I said at the beginning uh, what you're really paying for with uh, this particular product is uh, undoubtedly the software but uh, this uh, particular one this is the first model that they uh, released I believed but um, it's it really is uh, basic off the shelf almost even this tactile switch here I think that's a uh, programming switch so I think you can uh, get into it program the firmware and uh, this little tactile switch probably enables you to do that I'm not quite sure I haven't looked into it but uh, you know it, it, it is uh, really really basic hardware so uh, the couple of hundred pounds that they uh, charge for this initially the cost would have mostly covered software so I've scraped away the majority of the antenna there I just used a uh, sharp knife to actually scrape it away I've left this one track here that I'm going to solder the uh, PCB SMA connector onto so it'll be like that um, these two legs are probably just uh, super glue those down there um, just to make it a little bit more secure and uh, on the underside here I've uh, cleaned away that uh, white label and I've just scraped away this bit of the uh, uh, ground plane there as you can see and what I'm actually going to do is use some of this copper tape again I'm just going to stick it down onto the back there cut away the excess and what I'm going to do I'm just going to come in with a solder and actually uh, connect it up to that small amount of copper that I've scraped away there so we get a good connection to ground and it's always a good idea as well even if it looks obvious just to get your uh, multimeter out and check continuity with something that you know should be ground so with the uh, case of the uh, uh, crystal here or even the uh, S, uh, the USB connector here that should be ground although uh, you know on some cheap Chinese products sometimes the uh, case here is not actually connected to ground so you've got to be careful of that but um, it's definitely connected to ground here so that'll be a nice ground plane for the uh, 
um, PCB SME connector and uh, also because I'm using that uh, copper tape we can uh, solder the legs down in place here so we'll get a good connection and it'll be nice and strong as well. So I've got the foil in place and also connected it up to the ground plane and again just uh, don't take it for granted just double check that uh, you know you've got continuity there so it is actually connected to the ground plane and uh, on the opposite side I've just pre-tinned this trap ready for soldering onto that SMA connector. So I was soldering that through the uh, viewfinder on the camera which is always a difficult thing to do so I've actually got it soldered there now it's nice and strong so flip it over and just put some solder on the back of those legs. So that's the ground plane soldered in place and I think uh, I nipped that leg in there a little bit too much. There's a little bit of a fracture in there. They're not very strong these legs, they won't take a lot of uh, force and manipulation but uh, it's in there quite strongly now and I am going to pop a little bit of super glue on these two legs. So the good news is it looks like I'll be able to use this original case as well. So what I'm actually going to do is put the two plastic halves together and drill a hole straight in the uh, end here and uh, then I should be able to just pop this through and put those two plastic halves together I think that's going to work out well and uh, I've also done a little bit of reading about this as well um, because you know I, I do take uh, probably a week sometimes even more shooting these videos I'll just do uh, 15 minutes here and there when I get some time but uh, it is definitely a uh, development kit this it's sold as a uh, radio module so uh, metageek are probably putting their own firmware onto this chip here and then like i say the software that they write is uh, probably what costs the majority of the money that's why if you do buy one of these second hand one of the newer versions anyway make sure you get a uh, proper valid working key for your software otherwise uh, you know i'm not sure how much it costs to purchase the software but i probably think it would make up about uh, two thirds of the cost of uh, buying a new one. And this particular board, I don't think this is in production anymore, but it was made by uh, Unigen, is uh, a US company, and this is a Juno uh, wireless USB radio module development board. So if you do see a couple of these uh, new old stock, you know, and, and if I do as well, I might get a couple to see if I can play with them and see what you know what you can actually turn one of these into it would be uh, interesting to actually work with something like this and see if you can uh, develop your own simple spectrum analyzer with some kind of open source software. So what I thought we'd do next to test the uh, modification has actually worked is uh, I'm going to set up a little test. I'm going to test the uh, Wi-Fi around uh, where I am in the lab, you know, my neighbor's Wi-Fi, etc. See how much noise is actually out there using this uh, dipole antenna here. And uh, then what I'm going to do is uh, remove the dipole and attach a backward Yagi and uh, do a same scan again and just see uh, what we actually pick up with the uh, directional antenna. See if we can actually see anything more significant uh, with the uh, directional antenna than we can with the uh, omnidirectional dipole antenna. Now because the uh, refresh and uh, update rate of the uh, Y-Spy, this particular one anyway, is so so slow, I'm going to have to edit in between so it's not going to be a real time test but hopefully it'll show you what you can uh, actually achieve by using a directional antenna with something like this. So here we are then just with the uh, rubber duck dipole antenna on and you can see uh, there's a little bit of activity here on channels 1, 2 and 3 there's definitely uh, some activity there probably a local access point quite close to me and also on uh, the end of the spectrum here probably around uh, 10, 11 and 12 channels there's uh, also a slightly stronger access point here so you can see that on the waterfall here and here and also on the bottom here and here so what I'll do now then is I'll attach the uh, backward Yagi the directional antenna to the Y spy and see if we can actually uh, home in on these two signals a little bit more see what we can actually pick up 
So now that we've got the directional antenna on then you can clearly see those two Wi-Fi access points and you can see how they span around uh, three channels here at the top and here at the bottom. But uh, also what's interesting is these two quite uh, prominent strong spikes here and here. So there's a really strong spike in the middle of that access point there and I don't think that's the access point, that's something else. So if this was your Wi-Fi access point you may want to move it to somewhere here in between those two spikes because uh, that spike can cause a little bit of interference you know and especially if you're trying to use your Wi-Fi not in the same room as your uh, router it could cause serious problems and again this spike here you don't want to uh, actually set your access point to operate in uh, that region there because again that spikes quite strong and that could cause you problems so as you can see now that we can attach a uh, directional antenna we're getting a lot more resolution and we can really see what's going on in the spectrum around us now where the uh, dipole antenna you know it just gives us a brief overview now we can actually dial in with the directional antenna and see what's going off and you can clearly see these two spikes here and here which we couldn't see previously that could really cause some problems in a uh, Wi-Fi network setup. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, little video modifying a uh, original Y-Spy so it has this uh, external SMA connection here and it definitely uh, improves the flexibility that you've got with this um, d doing that modification actually adding a uh, directional antenna as you saw in that test really does have its uh, benefits but um, you know if you can pick one of these up for around uh, 40 or 50 pounds definitely worth a uh, purchase even though it's uh, quite old technology now downloading the light version of the software uh, it's still uh, a useful little tool today especially for about uh, 40 pounds it's very similar to the uh, Chinese uh, version that I did in a previous video and uh, you can pick those up for around 30 pounds but uh, there's a little bit more functionality in the software with this one rather than the uh, Chinese version and of course if you do look at uh, purchasing one of the uh, newer versions of this second hand off eBay as I said previously just make sure that they're also including the uh, software key the software key is really uh, where the money is at even though the hardware that they use now is uh, a lot faster than this still the money is in the uh, software not the hardware and it wasn't too much of a difficult modification either we didn't have to go around removing components off there we just had to modify that feed to the uh, PCB antenna here and then use that to actually connect to our SMA connector and again it's uh, a good being a good example of uh, why uh, data sheets can actually help you because the data sheet just uh, clearly showed that we've got those two lines coming out of the chip one for TX and one for RX so that's something you really need to know if you're going to modify something like this so if you did enjoy the uh, video please give it a uh, thumbs up and uh, any questions or comments drop them below and hopefully you'll join me on the next one.